Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It has been a quiet weekend with a little bit of rain that came through overnight into early Sunday, but we're going to back into a quiet weather pattern as we start the week. That is before some rain and snow arrives by Tuesday. Here's a picture of some of that quiet weather out there today. A few breaks in the clouds were spotted over at Pier Marquette Beach. Thanks to Sharon for sending us this photo. We should see more in the way of some clearer uh, skies as we head toward the end of the day Monday before those clouds build back in. Of course, if you would take a weather photo, you can always send it to me on social media. Meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on the X Twitter, Instagram and threads. Temperatures out there today hit highs in the 40s for a number of us. 40 in Grand Rapids, 41 Muskegon, 42 Holland and 40 in Kalamazoo. It's above average, but just inside our three degree guarantee. Told you 37 hit 40 this afternoon, bringing the current streak to 27 days in a row. Tomorrow temperatures about the same as today. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in green. The 13 on your side weather ball sponsored by La Fontaine Ford Grand Rapids and those temperatures tonight before we get back close to 40 tomorrow. We'll get on the chilly side. They'll still above average for this time of the year, but already down to 34 Grand Rapids, 32 Big Rapids in Fremont. Most of us will get down to about freezing tonight with cloud cover staying in place. Winds out there around 5 to 10 miles per hour will prove to make a little wind chill as we head through the overnight and into tomorrow. Temperatures again tonight dropping to the low 30s out there under cloudy skies. We'll warm to the upper 30s tomorrow as the sun pops out to end our day. Cloud cover though builds back in as we head head toward Tuesday. That'll be ahead of rain and snow pushing into the region tonight. 31 the low tomorrow. 39 your high. We stay in the 30s Tuesday, even with some snow in the forecast and a possibility for a few slick spots, especially Tuesday morning. This evening may see a sprinkle, may see a flurry, but that's going to be about it. You can see some of those on the radar out toward Holland 196 through Allegan County. Nothing impactful expected as we head through tonight with the rain from last night. Well off to the east now and us between systems here in our next uh, well, event maker as we head into Tuesday. Here's the hour by hour forecast cloud cover again sticking around as we head through tonight. Flurry sprinkle can't be ruled out as we head into tomorrow. We're looking at cloudy skies to start the day, but the afternoon brings in some clearing. We'll end with sunshine before cloud cover takes back over as we head into early Tuesday morning. That's when we also could see rain and snow start to push through. Band of rain and snow coming through as we head throughout the morning commute may make a few slick spots on the roads. I would not count on getting school off. This is not going to be a prolific snowmaker out there. We're going to see scattered light rain and snow continue through the rest of the day Tuesday before we push the precipitation out as we head into Wednesday and then we start a dry pattern that'll last the rest of the 10 day forecast. Here's a look temperatures out there for your Monday 30s on the lake shore close to 40 from Muskegon to the south temperatures up north in the upper 30s as well. We'll see a couple flood alerts still in place that watch in Comstock Park and a flood warning out in portions of Ionia County. County for the Maple River. Nothing uh, too extreme like what we saw in Portland earlier this week, and that thankfully has receded, but we'll keep an eye on things. The snow continues to melt with temperatures up close to 40 Monday afternoon. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. Temperatures briefly drop Tuesday with some rain snow comes through, but then we're back up into the low 40s for Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures drop as we head toward the end of the week, but it does come with sunshine. We'll be back to mostly sunny skies by Saturday, staying mostly sunny to partly cloudy through Monday with an increase in cloud cover toward the end of the forecast, but also temperatures that head back toward the low 40s. Those warming temperatures we were talking about in our area are causing the flooding concerns we've seen this weekend. The flood warnings that were in place at times for several areas in Ionia County after an ice jam on the Grand River began to break apart and cause water levels to rise. 13 of your signs, Jeremiah Brown reports. But this is the first time that I've actually seen it personally, and it's a pretty incredible sight. That was Sandy Cassane, a Portland native visiting the area, reacting to the ice jam this morning. The city of Portland says with the ice continuing to shift, certain low-laying areas can be at risk for flash floods. The city's agencies and first responders are working around the clock. Board of Light and Power crews are adjusting the electric grid when needed and the wastewater treatment plant remaining operational. Up the Grand River, agencies in Kent County have been preparing for the possibility of waters rising the flood levels. In terms of our response plan, our response plan is we uh, check to make sure the roads are passable or impassable. 
We make sure our crews are aware of what's uh, what we can get to, what we can't get to. Plainfield Fire District Chief Kyle Svoboda says they take steps to make sure residents can be ready to go in case of an evacuation. If we do need to come get you, make sure that you have, a, I'm going to call it a go bag, that might have your medications in it, phone chargers, uh, clothes for at least a couple days. So when we come, you know, get you, you're ready to go when we get to your door. He also asks that residents who choose to stay home during a flood to remember that it will take additional time for first responders to reach them. So be cognizant of what you're using to, I'm going to say, heat your homes and what you're using for uh, light, so don't use candles. Um, if your house does catch on fire and it's in the flooded area, we have no way of getting to it to put it out. And if you have a medical emergency, again, call early because it will take us time to, to get you out. Again, part of those flooding concerns is related to the melting snow and that same snow melt is impacting local activities as well, just like the world of winter festivities here in town. 13 on your sides, Marcus Key spoke to those who came out to enjoy the event and how organizers are working to make sure everything stays on track at least as much as possible. But if there's not too much snow, we'll take a walk and we'll look at the, uh, the frogs and it's really quite nice, yeah. The warmer than usual weather didn't prevent people from coming out to Anabwin Park to enjoy World of Winter's frog display. Many stopped to take pictures of the colorful creatures and plan to return tonight to see the giant frogs light up like a Christmas tree. We're just kinked down here now, we're probably on the way home, but we're going to stop by and see what these look like and we'll probably come back with a nice night, take some color pictures too. Bill Kirk from downtown Grand Rapids, Inc. says despite the melting snow, his team is committed to providing activities for everyone to enjoy. When we got that big snowstorm uh, the opening weekend, we did have to adjust and postpone some events, but we worked to reschedule everything and try to make sure we have a full calendar. Um, and the snow is always a great backdrop for the festival. Uh, it makes the installations look beautiful and really kind of activates uh, the downtown environment, but we can, we can do it without snow as well. One of the canceled events, Fire and Ice, is happening tonight at Rosa Park Circle. Organizers say they work around the clock, adapting to weather conditions to provide the experience that people have come to enjoy. Oh, we both love to take pictures, and they're so colorful. And we thought, well, maybe a sunny day would be good, but a gray day, too, you probably get more true color and not as much glare. Kirk says with or without snow, the show must go on. Even if the weather's really bad one day and you don't want to brave the elements, you can come out another day because you've got two months to enjoy the festival. But our team works really hard to keep everything up and running so that people can come out and enjoy the world of winter. World of winter continues now until March 10th. Reporting from Grand Rapids, Marcus Key 13 on your side. And many winter attractions just opened last week because of all of the snow. But now the businesses that rely on cold weather are unfortunately watching that snow melt away. Operators at Cannonsburg Ski Area say as of right now, they still have normal hours. Bittersweet Ski Resort in Allegan County hasn't changed its hours either, despite losing a lot of the snow with these milder temperatures and the rainfall that has been falling. In Muskegon, the Luge Adventure Sports Park closed the ice skating rink, skate trail, and luge trail. Track. It's recommended that you check their Facebook pages for any updates. And almost as quickly as the snow is melting away, so are the sleds disappearing from a pilot program in Grand Rapids with the goal to provide those sleds for people to use for free at several city parks. Just two weeks after GR Outside began providing free sleds, most have been stolen or broken. The sled libraries are at Mulk, Richmond and Plaster Creek Parks. Each park was stocked with 15 sleds to be used and then put back. Organizers of GR Outside say they're supposed to, they're surprised by how quickly the sleds disappeared. And at first they were restocking the supply. They tell us that they can't keep restocking the supply at the current rates, but will try to keep the program going. So our, our team decided to stop stocking the stations, uh, but we're leaving the stations in the park. So what we're kind of doing instead is asking the community like, hey, if you have a sled that you want to donate, it'll go to good use at, at these hills. You can leave a sled at these libraries. We're going to leave them up for the rest of the winter. So um, yeah, just hoping that we can kind of keep the fun going. GR Outside says they're receiving a lot of support from the community. They're just asking that anyone who uses a sled leave it when they're finished. 
And this warming weather is also jump starting pothole season here in West Michigan, creating more work for local road crews. We spoke with Ottawa County crews earlier this week to find out more about their work to combat these road craters. The recent warm up in West Michigan weather means drivers are free from the fear of ice and snow for now, but another hazard is emerging. Pothole season has returned to West Michigan. We get we get emails, we get calls. We have a service request system at Ottawa County Road Commission. That's Matthew Talsma with the Ottawa County Road Commission talking about all the ways reports of potholes are piling in this winter. He tells us it's the changes in the weather driving their workload. The freeze thaw cycle we have going on right now with as cold as weather as we had in the last week and then the uh, the thaw that we're having today. That rain we had, the water seeps into those crevices and cracks in the roadway and causes them to heave up. It's, it's a tough process for us. Let's break that process down visually. As Matthew mentioned, the first step is water seeping under the roadway. As temperatures drop, either with passing weather systems or during the overnight, that water turns to ice, damaging the roadway, a situation that is further stressed as traffic travels above. As temperatures warm and things dry out, the ice pocket under the road eventually evaporates, leaving unsupported pavement, which forms a pothole as cars continue to drive by. This process is happening all around West Michigan every winter, so while it may feel like we're always complaining about the roads, the reports actually do help road crews. No, we have, because we can't be everywhere at once, so when we get those reports, it's very helpful to us as well. So no, it's not complaining at all. And finally tonight, check this out. Usually when you have to use a gas station bathroom, the goal is to get in and out as quickly as possible. But one gas station company, well, they're going viral for a red button on the wall with a sign asking you not to push it. Here's what happens when you do. Yeah, apparently they are disco bathrooms and they're located at a handful of hop shop bathrooms in the Kentucky area. Valor Oil owns the chain and says the first one was installed in 2023, became an instant hit with travelers going out of their way to make it a destination. There's now plans to open more disco bathrooms in the future. I'd have to say that brief moment there at the beginning where the lights go out and you're not quite sure what's happening. That's got to be a little unnerving, but hey, disco after that can't be all too bad. You know what else is not all too bad? Well, it's sitting right here and watching more 13 plus. You've already found the spot to do it. Of course, you can find more information throughout the day too, 13 on your side.com or by downloading our news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's.